PTV, oberoende, piratistisk media, skapad och finansierad av tittarna. And we're back! Sweet! Oh, I, I know now what I did. I pressed the wrong button. Are we? We're back! Are we? Uh, well, it's a new year. Um, now I'm unsure. Are we back? Or is this, is it all... Saying something? Yeah, it should be working. And let me, I need to bring you in too. I don't know why, is that, um, is that gone? Have I destroyed everything? No. Oh, yes. Great. Don't feel like a new year. Don't feel like, a, uh, it doesn't really feel like a new year. I gotta, I, I don't know. I haven't really had the feeling it's a new year. There, yeah, there's a, there's been, I've seen the meme about uh, 2020 being a, a trilogy like five times now within a few days so yeah it feels like, it, like it's like the 500 or 600 something day of 2020 yeah yes whatever she said liminal hi good evening everyone uh, well, yeah, welcome back, Folostan. We were actually just... Uh, we were from New Year, as evidenced by the Christmas studio background. Which yeah, you know. oh yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm, I'm going to... I'm forever stuck in December 2021. True. Oh, my... What have you done? Come on, when is it... Are you supposed to take it down today, right? Or yesterday? When are you supposed to take it... I think there's like... You're removing it on... Oh god, I gotta, I gotta really start working on building the next set. How am I gonna... How am I gonna do this? So many things to do! It's crazy! 20 Knut, exactly. It's next week. Swedish tradition is actually you keep the Christmas decoration until 20 days after Christmas. Nutin päivä. Nutin päivä. Yes. There we go. I mean, we have a shared cultural history, so most of the stuff you have, we also have. I like it. Shared cultural history. Finland and Sweden. We got the most Chad cultural history. Chad. Yeah, <laughs> well, I like Chad more. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna just dream away thinking that you said Chad. There. Seven days left. I got seven days. My God, it's gonna be intense. Christmas is forever. I have to build the. Cre I have we to have build a, a whole yeah. spaceship. Seriously. Yeah, we have a joke about uh, like Valbo is so often like vapu vapu lopu like wow. it doesn't end. Wow, Letter that's, day doesn't end. That's a like, vapula papu. So basically, we have Christmas from like December to all the way to Valbris Mesoften, and then Valbris Mesoften for the rest of the year or something. Don't you have the midsummer? Times, they never end, they just keep going. <sighs> None of this American crap that Christmas ends on Christmas Day. I mean, I think that's been, like. I think, I, I guess it's like this, you, you throw the Christmas tree out a little, whenever it just starts to create a whole mess in your house. It's a really sad thing, killing a tree. I mean, it's killing a tree. always creating a mess. You always find the needles on the, uh, everywhere, like, throughout the year. That's true. We had one, like, a real Christmas tree, like, once when I was young. Uh, like, our own house, like, my... And, uh, and we kept finding the needles like three years after. Yeah, like one year. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, I gotta say I like the tradition my my mom is starting now, which is she doesn't buy a Christmas tree; she buys a Christmas tree plant. So it's a little plant baby. That's adorable. And then it gets planted. So oh. we try to make new trees rather than cutting them down. I mean, it's not, I mean, look, it's not going to change the world, but it's a nice gesture, actually. Yeah, and there is I something... I was thinking about asking my landlord if we could, like, plant something in the yard. I'm interested in planting, like, chestnuts, even though, like, for the, until now, uh, Finland has been too cold, like, the climate isn't suitable, that, like, actual chestnuts uh, can, like, uh, they won't produce anything, like, mm -hmm. they'll grow, but they won't start, like, bearing fruit properly. But now that, like, the Nordics are warming, or, like, the... 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Nordics are warming. They don't want a nut, they basically. Double or like tri- I think the latest was a triple the rates of the rest of the globe. Well, probably like if we plant chestnuts now, we can start getting fruit like in 10 years. Yeah. I actually had some chestnuts this Christmas. They're good nuts. I've never had them. Like, it's not as much of a thing here as it was uh, it is in like Central Europe, I think. Mm. I really should have tried them when I was traveling. Like, in the before times for a couple of years, I was always like somewhere around, uh, uh, somewhere in Central Europe in like late November, early December. And yeah. like, the chestnuts were, uh, the roasted chestnuts were everywhere. But no. No, they're nice nuts. I like them. Speaking of nuts, we have some leftovers. Apparently, like, in terms of nutrition, you can actually make, like, a staple flour out of them, eat them with just about everything. But, yeah. Yeah. That's a long and uh, brawling intro, but maybe it's just appropriate. It's very appropriate. It's the same. Everything the same. Nothing has changed. Don't you worry. We're going to be sitting here locked up for, yeah. for years. Anyway. Um, so we uh, we didn't make us uh, do a super great job of preparing this week. If you That's have something true. you'd like for us to discuss, we definitely have uh, room for that tonight. Yeah. So <laughs> bring your news. Throw some links at us. <laughs> I... Anything on your mind, as long as it isn't the US. And as long as, as it preferably it isn't not. Any, uh, 6th of January nonsense. Like there are other channels for that. Probably doing like a 24-hour cast on it. So let's not do that today. Yeah, not here. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is some stuff I, I don't think we mentioned, but uh, that are let's just say some of them are troublesome. I think these are actually mostly troublesome and fun though. But we'll start here. Um, Israel plans to double settlements in Golan Heights. Israel says it plans to double the amount of settlers living in the Golan Heights, invest hundreds of millions of dollars in developing the area. Um, yeah, this, again, isn't really news. It's just more of the same, more of the uh, expected, unfortunately. The, I haven't seen this. I hadn't seen this one. This was something you brought up, and I just collected the, yeah, the leftovers from last year into one post. Yeah. It, uh, the stuff I saw that there had been like Hamas rocket strikes and then retaliation. Yeah, I mean, it was a big, big, big thing, obviously. Uh, but but, but yeah. ever, ever since that happened, uh, Israel has intensified... Actually, we hear nothing of it since it's yeah. the holidays here. And I, uh, we've been ca- I've been trying to follow it a little bit uh, because I think it's well worth to mention because these stories don't get told. And there was actually a new one yesterday. I didn't bring it in. I should, maybe should have. Uh, but about that they're building 3,500 new homes in a new area. So, I mean, it, it's ongoing. And uh, this type of, um, I mean, apartheid and also just essentially stealing land. I mean, this is against all of the uh, agreements that has been put into place, yeah, everything. I mean, this is illegal occupation uh, of land. And the, there is just no other way around that. And uh, it's worth to note. Um, and it's normally not talked about. It's only talked about whenever there are rockets being fired. And then you can also imagine why do they fire rockets? Is it... Do, you, do, do they seriously hope to kill a lot of people with those rockets? Probably not. But it's one of the few ways where actually someone even starts talking about this or we even yeah. mention the... Uh, uh, I mean, what effectively is uh, 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 occupation. Yeah, basically, like, so. every time you... Like, when people start getting violent, like, whether it's riots, whether it's... Well, rocket strikes. It uh, like when things get violent, it usually means that like some people somewhere feel they are really out of options. Like this doesn't happen unless like this doesn't tend to happen. Like things don't get to this point unless someone out there feels like they have absolutely no other options. And again, this has been going on for a long a long time and we just like the western or like the attention span 
or like just the spotlight of the Western media doesn't tend to uh, focus focus on this conflict anymore. Like it barely does, even if there is violence going on. Mm. It's it's also worth to say that, I mean, a lot of this is happening. I mean, it wouldn't happen unless we silently gave our consent in the mm. West. I mean, well, like also... it says here, Bennett said the new investment in the region was prompted by the Trump administration's recognition of Israeli sovereignty over the swath of land and by the Biden administration's indication that it will not soon challenge that decision. So... So uh, most of the times, as Israel is doing this, it, they're doing it with the support of U.S., NATO, and, uh, you know, there, there are many ways that this could be protested. But again, it won't be uh, by West. This is happening under our full uh, silent OK. Uh, There's obviously other kinds of, like, work and, and activism going on. There's, like, <laughs> this isn't the only thing that's happening. But, again, none of it seems to be enough. None of it seems to, like, lead anywhere. None of it seems to change the situation. Mm. So. No, and, and a lot of people seem, like, if you don't bring it up once in a while, which I think you should, be, uh, people mm. seem to be like, why are the Hamas attacking Israel? And then you have to have that discussion all again, because no one is actually uh, lifting any other news. This, uh, it just gets silently passed. Like, uh, it's, uh, my, it's apartheid, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, okay, and there we go. There's a video uh, that was related to things we shouldn't yeah. do. Yeah, put it away. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyway, Chinese scientists develop an AI prosecutor that can press its own charges. Machine is so far able to identify eight common crimes such as fraud, gambling, dangerous driving, and picket, picking quarrels. That's very advanced AI. Picking quarrels. Uh, the Chinese have truly, like, they really made it this time. Wow. Oh my god. Researchers in China say they have achieved the world first by developing a machine that can charge people with crimes. You, I mean, I, I, I got to be honest. Um, now, often these news are kind of exaggerated uh, in a way, but this... I love the fact that you would go like a world first, like a success. I, I, I love the fact it's that the, the complete like techno-optimism. Maybe, they, maybe they're the first ones to actually like go for letting AI make these judgment calls. Do you? Which is not necessarily like it's not a tech thing. It's just a check it. A check this out. Thing. The AI prosecutor can file charge with more than ninety-seven percent accuracy based on verbal description of the case. Check that out. It's only three percent that could potentially be uh, judged and put away. Yeah, uh, the without any. <laughs> Doesn't amount to any significant no absolute numbers, given it's, you know China. And three percent in. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it would be. I guess it would be interesting to see, like. But it's fundamentally like how, a tool. How the numbers are like formulated for like cases judged by humans. Yeah. Like, how often do you get a like a? Yeah. How do you even? How do you even define an incorrect judgment? Yeah, well, the AI said it is. But I mean, okay, so, so a little bit to be honest, the point is that the machine can go through video fo footage and help to classify whether this is an offense or not, and hopefully classify it a little bit more. And then a prosecutor would obviously have to look at it and go through it. It's to kind of help with the sorting of cases. But I love, I love the techno. I mean, this techno optimism is fucking nuts. We've just sit, then we just came from other like crazy techno optimism into this. It's just like, hmm, maybe there is a reason why we don't want to be world for, first in certain things. You know, like yeah, there may be a. It's not necessarily a good thing to be the world's first. I mean, yeah. yes, you're the world's uh, first. You, you know, uh, uh, externalizing. Externalizing, uh, like, justice, basically, to AI may, I don't know, maybe it's development, maybe it's a sign of, like, progress for some, but uh, 
I'm not sure we want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm all for like different ideas of progress or development being like pioneered by uh, places or societies that aren't like completely uh, like defined by the Western uh, cultural sphere. But uh, again, just the, by the virtue of like not being like a Western idea or not being developed in the Western, uh, Western society, like that doesn't make it a, automatically a good idea. No. Uh, Folaston, on the other hand, he is. Nice to have alternatives, but like just having any kind of alternative doesn't make the terms of this. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, Folaston, for one, welcomes the new AI overlords and is a good citizen. Yes. Yes. I like. Hey, we better start typing carefully. Uh, anyway, 51 million super yacht. Sank gas tanker in Bahamas. I, I find this. I, I just had to. Yeah, yikes. A pricey 207 foot US 51 million super yacht, Utopia 4. Okay, so it's at least a series of three or four other ships. Rear ended a sank, a gas tanker off the coast of New Providence in the Bahamas last Friday, according to a statement issued by the Ministry of Transport and Housing. The Bahamas Office of the Eternal General has been consulted for legal guidance. The port department has begun a formal investigation into the incident, and the Department of Environmental Health is also conducting a review of the environmental impact. It was built in, uh, designed and built in Italy, the, 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 the Utopia 4. Uh, in 2018, the Italian designers report that the vessel is fitted with four light Rolls-Royce engines as well as four hydrojets that provide it with a top speed of 33 knots and an average cruising speed of 26 knots. It's a, w w if, you, if you want at some point, we could look at super yachts just to understand how incredible uh, wealthy some people are. It, it's a little bit of a, you know, when they have a whole personal cinema inside their gigantic ships and everything is in marble and gold diamond i mean it's just ridiculous it's, it's absolutely sickening to see um to be honest uh, uh the maritime management said this 160 foot tanker was traveling on its proper watch en route to great syrup k when it was rear-ended so it's essentially just they was just they just drove straight into the back of the ship Due to the depth of the ocean at the location of its sinking, yeah. it has been determined that the tanker cannot be safely salvaged. Sweet. Lovely. Uh, so yeah. it's going to leak oil. Uh, I guess that's what's going to happen. Yeah, it's just going to be stuck there and probably leak something like yeah. uh, all of it. How drunk and high were they? I mean, that's a good question. I yeah. mean, again, one of the slight problems here, you know, since <laughs> I'm a captain and everything. <laughs> um, the, the, it's a, it's a, it's a slight it, maritime law. I think is pretty clear on this that it's the captain's. Uh, the captain is responsible for the ship and anything that actually happens on the ship. But um, captain isn't just such an yeah, like most. I mean, like uh, pilot and a lot of these work. It's just not really valued anymore. I mean, you, it's not a really high status job. Nor do you get particularly well paid. And you know uh, the people that owns the boat. They are going to put a lot of pressure on you uh, to, yeah, well, you, I don't care if you don't want to. Uh, I mean, you can say no, but we'll find another captain, you know. Uh, yeah, we don't want to take this boat out. It's bad weather. People are drunk. I don't feel safe. I don't feel secure. I mean, I'm not sure if this in this case is the captain's fault, right? I don't know what happened. And I'm saying this is uh, an issue that as a captain, you, sh you are the one who's responsible and you need to say no. These people shouldn't be on board. This, these things aren't safe. Uh, the wa the water and the weather is problematic. We can't see far enough for to ensure a safe journey. Uh, and obviously, com this is at great odds with commercial interest. Um, so the, uh, the, the there can be quite a lot of pressure uh, to take risks. So quite, like there's very very little actual information about the conditions where this. Yeah, there's, there's nothing about this case, yeah. What the situation was like. 
and I'm not sure, like, given the interests that are involved, I'm not sure that we'll ever get like, like, the public won't hear of the exact conditions, since it's like a, like, massive super luxury yachts and like an oil company or a shipping company, so. Sorry, sorry, gas. Yeah, gas, not oil. Yeah. LPG, marine gas, and automotive gas. At least that's positive, if true. Mm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, a, a ship like this has a crew. Uh, you, it's a big crew mm. um, of people. Uh, I mean, they're full-time employed by whoever is that rich to have that mm. boat. And this is also what's incredible listening to the stories of the crews that have to be on these ships for the mega rich you know i'm actually not that clear on like how like what a gas leak or if it's uh, currently leaking uh like what would it mean at that scale no no me neither and obviously they are gonna say that it's always covered as like a uh, like type typical example of like maritime environmental disasters, but gas. Yeah. Like there was the pipeline last year that got us the photos of the ocean being literally on fire, but that was a pipeline, not like a individual tanker. So it's hard. Yeah, I don't know. But um, let's move and to... Also, we're going to get to Kazakhstan at some point. Like yeah, we we're, we're really soon. Have... Yeah. Uh, but let's move to a negative gas leak to a positive gas on no future leaks, maybe. Greenland permanently bans all oil and glass gas exploration. And now this is... Unused. In, in exciting news for the planet and environmentalists, Greenland has announced it's permanently halting all new oil and gas exploration in the country. Despite the recent discovery of potentially significant oil reserves off the island's east coast, the country's government says the cost for our planet, the cost for our planet, far outweighs any potential financial gains. The future does not lie in oil; the future belongs to renewable energy, and in that respect, we have much more to gain. In addition to banning oil and gas exploration, the country has also introduced legislation to halt the investigation, exploration and extraction of uranium. Hopefully Greenland's action will inspire other countries, probably not. And well, But I mean, now, this kind of depends on how much of the exploration is already done, right? I think that, that, that's a kind of a... <laughs> if a lot of it is already discovered and prospected, the exploration may not mean too much, but I think it actually does in this case. I'm not, I'm not going uh, to be too cynical. Like, the actual area that's counted as, like, being under... like, uh, belonging to Greenland is another question. Yeah. Since, uh, I mean, this is about Arctic oil, I yeah. guess. This is Arctic resources. Largely, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, I actually have a hard time like envisioning like how like how large the actual area of Greenland is since that's the like the north. Yeah, that's true. Most map projections is really distorted. Yeah. And you know the like the mm. ocean borders, like maritime borders, are always a bit like unpredictable compared to the land ones. They might reach out like really far in some places and be really close to the coast and some others, so. Uh, or just like correct, uh, accurate size of Greenland or something. Yeah. You need a Mercator projection, correct. Or maybe Greenland borders or something. Or yeah. Yeah. You can also take a projection like this, would give you a, a little bit more correct. Uh, yeah, but uh, try green, Greenland borders. It's also like we can just get the area and uh, compare it to something, but like apparently the 
apparently the borders actually stay pretty close to the actual shape of the. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of have to envision it as a sphere. Anyway, uh, it, uh, anyway, uh, should we look in Google Maps and check out where the border goes? Well, let me know if you find a good map. But positive news. Uh, Greenland. Like if you, yeah, apparently if you like lay down Greenland like verti vertically in its actual position, like across the United States, it does reach from like the very southern tip of Texas to just a bit above the, like north of the border with Canada. So yeah, it's, it's pretty big. Pretty big. It's not like as massive as it looks on the common projections. It's not like the size of Africa. But it's still pretty big. So, and again, uh, Greenland is a major player in the Arctic. Yeah, and it's also like I mean, Greenland is huge very because when when ice actually melt on land, obviously, then that uh, increases the sea level at a completely different rate. Um, but I mean, I guess when you're living on Greenland, I mean, they you have a completely different understanding of the effect of global change. Uh, you had another. Uh, story about this actually from Scott Duncan on Twitter uh, just talking a little bit about the, t the records of temperatures that's been broken this year. Yeah, just recent just the climate update. So I mean, we've had a, a we had a normal winter here. We've actually had yeah. like negative temperatures for for the most part since like halfway in like through November or something. Like we went over, uh, we've gone over uh, zero a couple of times, but it's been very brief. So it's mostly been, yeah, nice and crisp and wintry and snowy here. And I still, I just checked like snow cover in Scandinavia a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday. And it's still like just discounting the very Southern tip of Sweden still snow almost everywhere. So we've had a remarkably normal <laughs> winter yeah. or usual winter. But as seen on the map, like... Uh, we're the only ones, it seems know, like. Yeah, we're the only ones. And we're like slightly below the uh, average. I'm not, uh, actually not sure what averages they mm. use here. But, uh, but yeah. And I don't think it's actually average. It's having basically like a wintertime heat dome, apparently. Yeah, I don't think it actually is even trying to measure the average. It's just uh, the scale, yeah, just temperature, temperature scale. Uh, yeah, I did this almost like a week ago, I think so. Yeah, this is just the... Yeah, the next one is like... Uh, next one down is the temperature anomalies. But you can see the, the freaky... Uh, polar vortex changes, like this sort of weird, the complete unevenness. Yeah, this is again something I probably should have a better idea of, but... The bees yeah. are out in January. I mean, look at that. Northern Scotland, mm, yeah, the yeah. bees are thinking it's spring. Yeah, that's pretty fucked. Yeah, and didn't, like the UK, like Scotland, uh, didn't they have like these, uh, what's the word? Not forest fires, but just like uh, terrain, uh, terrain fires, uh, plains fires. I don't know. Anyway, uh, in like February, a year or two ago. Like, mm. So this is a recurring thing for them now. Okay, now I'm feeling a doomer in life. I need some positive news. Let's talk about Kazakhstan. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Maybe we could take the James W, the James Webb telescope first. I'm going to be too doomery if I go to Kazakhstan. I have friends who live in Almaty, by the way. I really need mm. to check they're okay. 
Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, this is a good news that good news that happened last week. James Webb uh, Space Telescope unfurls massive sun shield in major deployment milestone. This was one of the most nerve-wracking post-launch steps. Essentially, the sunscreen is, uh, was actually deployed. As far as I can understand, the whole all of it was deployed. Um, With the successful deployment of our right sun shield mid-boom or arm, Webb sun shield has now taken on its diamond shape in space. So that should be the whole launch of the sun shield, which again has been one of those things that people have been extremely nervous about because it's, it's a pretty complicated pr procedure to do in space. And when you can't really test it uh, in space before you are in space, for instance. Um, pretty extreme uh, environment. Yeah, uh, obviously being like, I'm not much of a space person, or, but uh, or like uh, like not this type of STEM load usually. But I've been making my way through some like explainers about this, and it's yeah, seems kind of cool. But <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> I, remarkable. I, I don't have much to say about this. I think the the cool thing to figure out now. Uh, I mean, the the I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, the data that uh, James Webb will bring. It's gonna it's it it can you never know. Uh, last time when we sent when the uh, Kepler telescope was sent up, they thought they w it would be strong enough to detect more Earth-like planets, but it wasn't because it's actually it turns out that it was just below the ability to detect planets of that size with uh, around stars uh, with any sort of greater dependability. Th that's why, for instance, we still don't really know how many Earth-like planets there are in, uh, you know, in the right zone from the planet, for instance. But James Webb will be interesting because it's going to be able to see the atmosphere on uh, on distant planets. It's going to be able to do those sort of things. It's going to be able to look inside our own solar system and check uh, and find answers to the X-rays from Uranus. Uranus. <laughs> nice. uh, for instance, Uranus is actually a, probably a better way to say that. Um, and it's also going to be able to look at the most distant uh, stars uh, and galaxies, the most distant galaxies, and try to answer questions on the formation of galaxies, how that works like, and how uh, stars and planets are formed. Uh, and also look back into the very, very beginning of the first stars and the first, at least the first galaxies, and try yeah, to find out how they I've, formed. I have read about it, yeah. So it, it's multi-purpose and has a lot, of, it can answer a lot of very interesting questions that just no other telescope... Uh, it's just going to be a lot more powerful and are looking in very interesting infrared spectrums, which means that it is not encumbered by dust, for instance, uh, uh, in the same way. So it probably also can have a good look into our, possibly our own uh, black hole. Sagittarius A star, as it's called, in the center of uh, the Milky Way. It's going to be interesting. Um, but it's it's uh, to to it's uh, still six months or something away from when it's actually going to start its first real scientific missions. Even though it's going to arrive, not too. F I think it's going to arrive in a couple of weeks. There's a lot of testing that's going to go on, and a lot of adjusting and making sure that uh, testing the systems and making sure that everything is deploying correctly and yada yada yada, all that stuff. Yeah, one of the cool things about this is it's, I guess, kind of a proof that we're still capable of mega, uh, mega projects like this is the kind of thing we're still capable of if we really want to like <laughs> yeah yeah so and many of our problems like it's not about the technology it's not about the like it's just about the resources and how we decide to like what we decide to focus them on yeah um yeah, I mean exactly, and I think it also compares a little bit. You know, you know look at it. This is this has been uh, taking up a third of NASA's budget for I don't know how many years. But yeah, it's a, it's a have been like their budget has been brutally cut as well. Really, uh, really, really badly cut. Like, uh, pro like pro <laughs> getting progressively worse uh, for decades now. Yeah, which still, is is they can still do this. Yeah, 
And I mean, it's worth to compare. So this 10 billion observatory costs 10 billion, I think it's a little bit more, 11 billion dollars. So essentially, that's uh, like your new nuclear power plant. Yeah, it's pretty close. Uh, which, when you start thinking about it, or it's, it's one hundredth of, uh, essentially, let's see, so the, the military budget for USA is closer to one trillion dollars. Yeah. So, a year, right? So they could send up, um, how many is that, a uh, hundred of these telescopes a year? Uh, yeah. instead I mean it's it's or Jeff Bezos personally could uh, send up uh, you know uh, what 25 of these no problem yeah uh, something equivalent it, there I, I think actually James Webb telescope helps to put other things into some form of economic perspective when you're talking about because if you understand a little bit about James Te Webb Telescope, you know that this is like a 30-year project that mm -hmm. has some of the world's most top scientists all over the world collaborating, working together. Uh, I mean, it's just a huge effort. People have dedicated their entire careers to only this. And this is like a weird remnant of like the mindset we used to have. Or the yeah. mindset like governments used to have about... Yeah. Achieving things or working towards long term objectives. Yeah, exactly. And it's there to study these sort of philosophical questions that actually is kind of key to humanity. Like, where are we from? I mean, how did it start? What, what are we, what, how did the earth form? You know, um, is it possible to find life on other planets? Are we alone in the universe? I mean, these are the type of questions why this was created. And I mean, uh, so what if we just spent, what if we took all of our military budgets and just spent it all on these sort yeah, of questions? Kind of a fraction. Just 10%. Like, this is the kind of math you can do about, like, do with the, say, solving, uh, uh, well, not solving, but just you know, a sustainable transition. Like, yeah. you can't just, like, there are many environmental issues, like planetary crises, we don't actually know exactly how to solve, but we could make such a great start just by redirecting, like, even like a fraction, tiny fraction, a few percent even, yeah. of uh, the current, like, say, US military budget into just you know decar uh, uh, decarbonization of the grid uh decarbonization of different cru uh, like critical systems are reliant on like getting rid of, rid of fossil fuels yeah There's so much like yeah it's not uh, the it problem is the will the problem is really doomer the topic but we managed to make it doomer anyway yeah well i mean uh, but I, but i think that's that's one of the i i think to a certain extent like if you say well if we divide 10 percent of u.s military budget we could solve a lot of world uh, we could solve world world hunger right yeah i mean and pe yeah. but people don't really care about that yeah. right to a certain extent i don't think that's like but uh, uh, but but you know, or you could say, well, we could you know build uh, nuclear power uh, for you know we could build like uh, fifteen new nuclear power plants. You I know, speed up the development of like next generations of like these small uh, modular ones or like, yeah. anything. Um, there are so many things we could do, uh, but this is actually uh, you know <laughs> a little bit like that turning into a boomer thing uh, or doomer thing. Uh, sometimes I feel like. This has the most impact on people, right? Because because it it carries the hope of humanity and not the destruction or or the unequal mass, you know, the outrage of humanity. Because sometimes when you're comparing costs and want to make it clear, it can be good to do it with hope. And this is kind of doing it with something that most people feel is really interesting and hopeful, and it doesn't bring you down into a negative spiral, but it still puts things into perspective. Is it right? something? People at worst usually feel like ambivalent about. Yes, exactly. It's not like, well, if we took ten percent of uh, the U.S. military, yeah, budget, we could solve like, hunger. Okay, we could be using this money for worse things. Yeah, usually. Um, 
let's let's talk about Kazakhstan. Uh, let's take to uh, let's take a little bit worrisome. Uh, go let's go back then. to Dumarin. We were yeah. all we were almost there anyway. So <laughs> yeah, I'm really going to circle him back to the Dumar perspective. So Kazakhstan, like I, this is actually an interesting. Like I found. I found, uh, I think I first heard about this through like I follow these like NGOs that track internet shutdowns. So I found out about this from a very pirate perspective. Hmm. And that's uh, uh, and besides that, there's been a lot of talk from like the Bitcoin and also like bit, uh, people who criticize uh, this whole crypto hype uh, phenomenon. Like that's also one that's been talking about this a lot and then there's maybe the like the geopolitics people coming in third but uh, what I found out maybe we can try to look up some stuff like what's what the actual like background of the whole uh, conflict or the crisis is since the narrative obviously from these certain uh, certain people and certain spheres has been that uh, Bitcoin literally like caused this, like uh, Bitcoin, co uh, the Bitcoin mining operations that caused uh, like skyrocketing, uh, skyrocketing, uh, skyrocketing, or like just tightened uh, prices of electricity mm -hmm. and uh, and fuel, which then has led to the protests. But it's probably really simplified, and mm -hmm. it's kind of telling that this is. This is the only reason that some people are paying attention to it, just like to use it in this weird like culture war of a crypto. So I'm personally interested in like the other background. Like I just all I know about Kazakhstan is huge. It's like smack in the middle of like Eurasia. It's like ge geopolitically interesting. It's like the wedge between China and Russia, and it's been ruled by like an authoritarian family. I think. To, uh, like an authoritarian dynasty, at least for a couple of um, couple of um, uh, generations. Like that's all I've got mostly. So it's maybe we could try to find something that it's that's not just about the crypto. Um, yeah, I mean, perspective <laughs> as interesting as it is, and also the internet shutdown. Since the internet shutdown was in response, at least. Based on what I've read Fuel so far, prices. it was in response to the unrest. It didn't have to do like directly, necessarily, uh, with the whole Bitcoin, uh, 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 any of the Bitcoin stuff. Like, like the kind of the picture some people are painting is that there's the Bitcoin stuff. Energy prices go up, fuel prices go up. People are mad. People overthrow the government. There's unrest, and the government uh, officials shut down the internet, which is a like outside, it's kind of outside what we're used to here, but in many parts of the world, it's a very typical way to crack down on unrest, on civil unrest. So, and like, it's a political weapon. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, fuel prices has been a huge issue for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people are already yeah, depressed financially. Uh, I mean, it's it's and Kazakhstan. I mean, I like you point out. I mean, this is this. I, I doubt it. But also, I I gotta say this. This is a part that makes me a little bit frustrated. We could look at some scenes from there. Um. Yes, I mean, crypto isn't the solution to all problems, right? But it's not the fucking end of the world. Uh, like, this is something that largely splits part of the left in many weird and, and unfortunate ways and starting to become... It's like, I don't know why people focus so much on that currently. And it's become like this huge discourse uh, that is just... Yes. People who are pushing, uh, people who are trying to sell things, no matter what it is, they're not going to be honest. They're going to try, they're trying to sell you things. You know, that's what they do. You, you hype things. You, you're trying to make money of something. Uh, that's true regardless of what. Um, 
in my world. And, and occasionally that is being lifted as well. Okay, well, yes, obviously they are. I mean, this again, it's capitalism, right? What, what do you expect? Uh, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's weird to me, some of, the, some of those things. Anyway, here's some we got from cop cars burning in burning in Almaty. People versus the military. I mean, it's huge, massive demonstrations going on. And I mean, obviously then, like we talked about with, you know, BLM, it's more things. Don't simplify that ever, right? I mean, maybe fuel price was one of the triggers, but this is like massive protests is typically for a lot of different reasons. Civil unrest isn't no, simple. I mean, it's an authoritarian it's a country under authoritarian rule with like sandwiched between two major world powers also under authoritarian rule. So mm. it's guaranteed to be something or many things going on there all the yeah. time. Lots of tensions just barely below the surface or just not even necessarily below the surface. But this again, maybe kind of a like if we if we go wade into the whole crypto debate, uh, like apparently this is the first link uh, we brought up. Kazakhstan is a power player in the Bitcoin world. Last year, the nation became the world's second largest center for Bitcoin mining after the United States, according to the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance. After China, a major hub. Clamp down on crypto mining activity. As of August, yeah. Kazakhstan was hosting 18%, so almost a fifth of global uh, Bitcoin mining, according to Fortune. And obviously, when they get cut off, uh, off the internet, it has implications for the just the whole network. Yep. And this, again, might raise some questions about how disconnected or independent from uh, government outrage this system is after all. I mean, the fact that it's continuing to work it would be the difference. I mean, if this was, say, a Kazakhstan bank that owned everything and they just shut down, I mean, I guess for people who have a local bank and they can't do any transactions at all, mm -hmm. if internet goes down completely, right? Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's sure both. It. Crypto people are already arguing that like this is just going to push towards like further decentralization of everything, whatever that, whatever they mean. I mean, whether it's like that's it, this is so somehow going to yeah, just make the like uh, just speed up the development, speed up. Uh, I doubt that. I mean, yeah. the, the problem with Bitcoin, obviously, is that th there's a lot of value in being... Uh, I mean, this is like anything else. If you already have uh, large ones more, right? I mean, it's the same thing as why does, co why does company end up... You know, why does industries end up ha having just a few monopolistic companies? I mean, yeah. that's what's going to happen with Bitcoin mining o o over, uh, over time. I mean, depending on how valuable it gets. By the end, maybe you start out with everyone having their own computer, but some players are going to grow. They're going to get bigger. They're going to eat the other players. They're going to want control. And unless you, unless you limit that in the protocol, which Bitcoin isn't. I mean, you could limit this. You could say uh, this is limited within the protocol. Like, you're not getting any benefits from being large-scale miner. I, only small scale miners are allowed on the network or stuff like that right but people typically find their own ways and uh, stuff around that but i mean you could you could potentially do things like that um, um but i mean if you don't uh, you're going to see market working as market does by centralizing power i mean that's what's going to happen over time you need to really counter that and that needs to be like the thinking when you create a system yeah, needs to be that power can't centralize like, the whole many of the arguments like like 
people like crypto proponents seem to go for like they seem to use decentralization as this like buzzword the same way that like digitization or digitalization has been used for like a couple of decades now like it's just something that's going to like if you adhere to it if you just you do it for the sake of itself it's got like intrinsic value and it's automatically going to lead to all these nice things and that's my problem with it like okay it might uh, uh the issue with this decentralization as like a value in itself is that when usually when you decentralize something in uh that used to be maybe somewhat centralized you and en- just end up transferring the like point of centralization so something else like some other part of the system and the uh the centralization crops up somewhere else yeah after i mean you can solve you it short make, term uh, right but if yeah, you don't you have to make sorry what sorry yeah you you can you can like if we have all power centralized you could go do like mao did right you could say Oh, well, fuck it. Uh, we're going to distribute all the land equally to everyone who is living, not living in a big city. Right? But if you allow free trade of that property, over time, the same structure is going to appear again. It's going to centralize, right? Mm-hmm. And unless you decentralize... I mean, I'm not, I think in many cases... I mean, it depends on the case, right? But in many cases, decentralization or authority, right? The one leader is good to decentralize power. But decentralization on its own is a temporary measure. Like, if, you, if, you, if we would take all of the world's riches and distribute them equally among people, it would probably take something like, you know two or three generations for that to be back where we are today maybe faster today even like it's not it's not a long-term solution you'd have to change the system or built in built into the system that you know uh, you can only own this much land if you're going to own land at all right or um Um, you know particularly with uh cryptocurrencies it's like like the decentralization is even like just it's dependent on the like being able to use and navigate the whole ecosystem the whole sp- uh, crypto sphere basically it's dependent on a certain level of like technological literacy absolutely i mean which just most people don't realistically have and it's like almost actively gate kept like this is something that uh, just that crops up in the discussion constantly that uh like you just don't get it you just don't everyone who doubts it or isn't uh, doesn't buy into it everyone who doesn't like immediately uh nod their head along it's going to be well you just don't get it like you just don't understand tech i mean i i think it's not strange because it it, it follows the same mlm sales pitch that anything does right yeah i mean a lot of these people they're invested in this they're trying to sell you something they're gonna use any any form of uh, you know whatever they say is gonna become buzzwords like any other industry or trading stocks or whatever uh the same patterns that just this digitization uh discourse is followed like there's the hype people who just swoop in and tell tell the public uh, public administration people that uh, like you may not understand it now but you're really going to regret it if you don't buy into it right now like yeah i mean it's the same you need to get on the train now like this is going to help you in the long run even if it's going to cost a shit ton and you won't uh, 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 see the immediate benefits of it like you just you just want to be involved yeah yeah it's it's same patterns it's the same, uh, that's absolutely the same patterns. And I, I think you can make the case uh, for that the technology in its own is interesting and could revolutionize a lot of ways that government and business is handling its stuff. But that's not currently, uh, governments aren't interested in that because banks aren't going to be interested in that. There, there, there is no power that's really interesting, interested in it's building really a decentralized system. Exists. It's being touted as a solution and like a, so a, t- a technological solutions for solution for all kinds of things. 
most of which like and it's really unclear whether it's actually a superior solution or a solution at all for like most of the things it's claiming to so i mean it really depends on how the actual network is being built and for what purpose and and how it's going to be used i mean are, is the government on board with doing this i mean look if we forced the central bank to follow these set of rules and did this you know if we implemented that uh, you know your own local blockchain where you could have your own data and that you shared that with facebook and we draw uh, data laws that actually worked with that yeah it's pretty cool that could probably work if we took your bank account from banks that lend you money instead gave you your own bank account that is in your blockchain controlled by you these are things that could potentially be really cool and and good if companies could be started without you know and you could get all of your accounts checked and tax could be automated yeah that would probably be pretty cool but the problem here is that uh, it could be used in really amazing ways the problem here is that the banks and the governments who currently have the power if you want them to change that you're going to have to vote people in that actually wants to change that no, no one is going to give up power and say hey uh, the government and me and my salary and all of the power people you know we should have our accounts scrutinized by by anyone right yeah but this just goes back to the whole question of like uh decentralization and somehow doing away with government uh, overreach and government uh, power over finance. Like, if you have to go back to, like, we need a different people in government who are going to enable this, you're definitely not, like, do you see the problem here? I mean, I think you are listening to how libertarians would argue for crypto, for, yeah, for, for you to the buy their crypto. crypto. Like, mythology, really. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's crypto, uh, crypto libertarians, and crypto fascists. Like, it's one of the central promises. Like, that's what they kind of like when you back them up uh, against a few walls. They go back to like, well, would you rather keep going with the same system we have now, be beholden to the banks? Like, would you rather like at least this is can't be worse than what we have right now. This is what. They oh, it can absolutely get a lot worse. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, it... uh, uh, that's, that's absolutely. Like all these crypto people, it's not just like there's different levels of like buying into the whole like ideological side of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But most of the people going around like just preaching it and uh, uh, yeah, but... preaching it and like telling people to. Yeah, but it's like an ML. I mean, the, uh, I, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I completely agree. But I don't really see it uh, differently from someone trying to sell, you know, the latest MLM or selling me the latest stock or, hey, you got, I got a good investment mm -hmm. advice for you. Check out this company, you know, or, um, or that sort of stuff, really. Um, I think it's just a little bit... I mean, we'll see what grows out of this, right? I mean, you never know. But the problem is, like, you're not going to... You may change the world to if you're going on... A, if we would all go on a general strike and really take... I mean, really put pressure on power to change. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you, you could change. I mean, there are actions that you could do. But if you want a fair society, right... Um, you could potentially use this power, th these type of technology, um, but it's not going to be given up by people, right? And if you are just a Bitcoin that doesn't in any way in its own system limit the way that uh, the power of any one individual and doesn't come with this sort of control that would need be needed in this sort of system to make sure that not you don't end up in a, you know, a centralized, super authoritative system is um it just it's just uh, going to just wait Again, the only point like the that i'm kind of trying to bring this back to is that maybe just maybe the technology in itself doesn't solve all of our current problems maybe i, I don't i'm not sure who is saying that going though. to guarantee that like the same shit doesn't crop up in a slightly different form or that the centralization doesn't occur in like uh maybe a slightly different but still possibly like a critical part of the system. 
I mean, cent like, centralization technology is not going to solve our problems. Which is, and you're just confirming this by going back to the, well, we need like popular power or political power to actually make these things happen or guarantee the good outcomes. That's yeah. my that's my only point. Like that's that's my only. I mean, I thing think you about this, really. you do right. I mean, I, to be honest, I have never run into someone who who has ever said to me, at least, that crypto is going to solve all of our problems. I mean, I I don't ha I don't like hear those arguments but i do hear a lot of people trying to sell and make money out of crypto you know using all sorts of different traditional tactics of you know mlm or whatever you know like buy this you're gonna be rich in Probably you actually live in if you haven't heard this like i have arguments used to sell the i would love to uh, send me if you have i would love to hear I mean, I'm sure some people are. It's just that I haven't been in a discussion with anyone who argues that this is, you know, going to solve all the problems. You can, you can hear that they're thinking it's going to solve an individual problems. And I do agree. A lot of people say decentralization for decentralization's sake. I mean, yeah. if... To, like, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, a lot of times power have been decentralized. That's good. But if you don't, it's often good, not necessarily good. In a lot of like cases, it's good. Advocacy for a specific technology can like take, end up being like, it, it, it can be very ideological and it usually is very ideological. It definitely yes. can be. Yeah. Yeah. And this is something like that some people have trouble with. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think the whole discussion is... like It's just this, like, it's just how things work, it's just the science, it's just the, like, dynamics of it. It's, again, like, I've said this many times over now, but, like, some people really like to believe, or at least claim to believe, that uh, technologies can just, uh, individual technologies can, like, rewrite everything uh, about, like, how we've been doing things. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. Very, uh, and you see a lot of this in the. I mean, I to be honest, I see more people who believe that immigration. If we just stop having immigrants, then all of our problems are solved, and criminality will die. Like, it, but I guess that's just maybe that's because I'm same, focused uh, uh, in Sweden. You can generalize it to the same impulse that like there's this one one thing that can solve things, or this one thing that is causing everything. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's always problematic, uh, and I I, I yeah, also yeah, think I, I mean the the kind of idea. Also, I think that this sort of narratives are specifically so strong when the, you have a personal financial gain in it. There is another thing. It's pers it particularly strong. I mean, I don't spend a lot of time on Twitter. I mean, like I'm only there to laugh at people, right? Um, but Twitter and so certain social media is effectively reducing every single discussion into point, 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 which, which is just de detrimental to any form of discussion about any particular topic, in my mind, right? Um, so maybe there's a lot uh, of that type of discussion there. Yeah, the dynamics of the platforms definitely like push towards certain kinds of interactions. Like you can find bubbles where it's not just about that, but yeah. But this is kind of old. Uh, like this is very old. Like this isn't that interesting anymore. This uh, whole general point about uh, uh, social media pushing us towards polarization. So should we like get back to something else or move on? Yeah, we could talk about this uh, one. Uh, the uh, Russia shit. Yeah, I mean, Russia's getting involved. Of course, they're getting involved since it's... Uh, they're also getting involved in Kazakhstan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, first of all, I, I, I guess... And I, I'm going to be honest, at least from my perspective, Russia, whenever we're talking about joining NATO, which, to be honest, I don't think Sweden should do. Um, but whenever we're talking about NATO, Russia always says about the same thing. This will ruin our relationship. 
you definitely should not. We will take this as, as some form of aggression or a personal insult or whatever. Um, th but that's one of the things that, that happened. Um, I guess they're even more on your asses about that. Whenever that's being discussed. Coming up at least a few times a year. And now that, I mean, the presidentials aren't that close. It's maybe like 2024. So we've got like two elections to go before those. And there's, they're already talking about it since the president's officially like, like foreign policy is handled between the prime minister and the president. Oh, yeah. The president has been usually been expected to like weigh in on the whole NATO question. And it's maybe the one of the major questions that like presidentials tend to in, uh, like revolve around. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been in the news a lot. It's actually managed to overshadow most of the discourse around the election was supposed to have this month. So wow. it's not ideal. Um, but yeah. Yeah, our news is kind of just about COVID and about but immigration. Just, just looking at the map, uh, it's fairly obvious why NATO is such a, and Russia are such big uh, massive questions for fin uh, 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 Finland. Basically, one of the, the yeah. like central central features of our political uh, uh, political culture, and like definitely, like the our foreign policy has always been heavily determined by our relationship to Russia. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so U.S. President Joe Biden's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan discussed the Ukraine situation, Ukraine situation with representatives of Finland and the four other Nordic countries on Tuesday, according to White House statement. Sullivan spoke with his counterparts from the Nordic countries to consult on ways to strengthen transatlantic security and about their readiness to impose severe consequences on Russia if it engaged in further aggression against Ukraine. Whoop. Uh... I mean, the way it seems like at least what's what gets talked about uh like you know public uh just on the media like columns uh the whole at least the surface levels of uh just security policy uh discourse i follow um it's never about the specifics it's always just talk like what I would be uh, like I haven't seen a single definition of what further aggression towards Ukraine would actually mean. Yeah, or Since what is Russians severe? Been, yeah, Russians have been there in one way or another for like what a decade now. So, like, what would this mean? Like, it's yeah, and what what is it? readiness to impose severe uh, consequences on Russia? Does that mean to send tanks through the borders? Is it like uh, what does that even mean? But I mean, it's. It, I, the question, I guess it's been... If the question in chat is like, if it's a Finnish stream today, no, actually, I think this is the uh, first uh, news bit involving Finland that we've gone through tonight. So if you just joined, you would just missed all the non Finnish stuff. Yeah, this is Finland and Sweden, I guess, really. Because yeah, Finland, Sweden, Ukraine, uh, Russia, Whoa, Jesus the Christ. US even. Almost falling over. Um... Speaking of which, apparently the Norwegians are getting mad over the Finnish F-35 purchase. Apparently we somehow got them for cheaper than they did, despite them being like a NATO number. <laughs> I, I, I haven't really looked into that more. It's really recent, couldn't find anything in English about it. But yeah, yeah somehow, yeah. But it's nice that you're buying US weapons, at least. That's friendly of you. Yeah, like this is typically what a NATO that, membership that, that comes with. This course has been going on for like ten years now. <laughs> like, I'm almost just glad it's over for the most part. But obviously, everyone has been really. Um, there are legit reasons to be suspicious of like further involvement or deeper involvement with um, the US. Uh, 
Well, it kind of com- a NATO membership kind of comes the, with a promise. When it comes to security policy. Yeah. I and mean, the military, and uh, then for uh, for instance, like the other one of the other options was the Swedish one, like Gripen, was it? So yeah, probably. There are people who are disappointed of that. Yeah, I mean the. Kind of the, I mean, okay, global arms trade is one of the largest industries. Uh, it's huge, and and this is also like it's just uh, kind of na- it's really nasty, and it comes with. Uh, I mean, this has also been one of the criticism of of NATO. You know how it's being used to sell U.S. arms, I mean, like how it's kind of dependent on and U.S. typical foreign policy is a little bit depending on that. You're also buying their arms, right? You you need to plug in with us. You need to have this plane. Or you should. Uh, <laughs> you want some military aid? That's well, fine, but you you need to use this friendship. money to buy our. Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a kind of way to outsource some form of corruption to the U.S. military industri- uh, industrial complex. This is similar to the Marshall Plan, by the way. I mean, it's not necessarily evil. I'm not I'm not saying that, but you know, here you go, uh, Europe. You can you get a lot of free money as long as you only trade with us. So you can use it to buy U.S. Somehow, goods, right? like especially evil when like other world powers do it. Yes, it's like very evil when China does the same, for instance. And or Russia. Often, yeah, or Russia does the same. I mean, this is... Uh, um, t- uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, let's just say like a free uh, trade deal uh, with US is not necessarily particularly uh, free. But uh, that's a little bit beside the point. Uh, free trade isn't really like about the free or freedom part. Yeah, well, yeah, it's more about turns the U.S. freedom. Turns out. Who could have believed? Yeah, who would have known? Despite who the nice have, term, who would have doubted or like yeah. expected anything? Um, it's just free on the tin. So yeah, exactly. Not be free. Freedom. There's an eagle on it. Look, it's free. Um, but yeah, Finland and Sweden are close partners of the U.S.-led NATO alliance, but no members, but not members of like the three Nordic countries, which are Denmark, Iceland, and Norway. Um, yeah, I mean the the reality is, I think Sweden and Denmark are incredibly close to the U.S. I mean to the level where we um, where we blocked any sort of investigation. Um, into uh, the scandal that arose when it turned out that. U.S. had been covertly spying on almost every single world leader when that information was leaked. Um, So Sweden and the U.K. at that time blocked any investigation uh, from being taking place into this. And Denmark, obviously, quite recently, uh, turned out they've been selling, uh, they've been spying uh, on other U.S., uh, on other European leaders on behalf of the U.S. since that. So they continued that operation on their own. And willingly forwarded all of this information to uh, the U.S. Security Services, FRA in Sweden, which is our, our uh, uh, oh, secret kind of radio. Uh, what do you what the hell do you call them? CS, not um, Your NSA. Basically. NSA, yes, exactly. Uh, did um, uh, has for a long time traded traded uh, everything with the U.S. in exchange for trading U.S. information on Swedish citizen. Which is also why it's kind of pointless, because normally NSA, NSA aren't supposed to study, uh, to uh, obviously uh, do internal data gathering. You know, that's the Snowden case, right? It's pretty upsetting that NSA is spying on our own citizens. Now, the way they uh, partly have gotten around that is typically allowing other nations to spy on their nations and then trading uh, Swedish citizens information like so they kind of trade this back and forth nowadays that doesn't really matter at all because uh, in in sweden fra is allowed to spy on swedish citizens so and this is also used as an argument to pass further intelligence laws and intelligence powers to uh all kinds of officials domestically like this is basically how they lobbied for the latest round of like um increased like powers for yeah, our intelligence officials are uh, like last term, so maybe like three. I think it passed like three years ago, three or four years ago. Yeah. Now, 
and uh, they ba- what they basically said that like everyone else like <laughs> yeah, it's so if, fun. Uh, like currently like every every other country in the world is sp- spying on our people so like we're the only ones who go- don't get to spy on our people so you just you uh, do you like the sound of that no then maybe you should just legalize us spying on our people <laughs> so we don't argument. have to ask other countries for to, yeah for the data like their <laughs> Uh, data on our people like this is how they yeah, yeah. it's absolutely i mean it's so fucking done, sad done it and pathetic uh, and worrisome on so many different levels but yeah that's the way it is um enough enough about uh i thought yeah right uh th- i mean in all the tension that's happening globally right now uh, at least China, Russia, and the, U- the UK, the United States, and France have agreed a further spread. Ha- have agreed that a further spread of nuclear arms and nuclear war should be avoided. I'm glad we're getting back to that. Um, okay. Um, according to a joint statement released on Tuesday morning, uh, the five countries, permanently members of the United States Nations Security Council, permanent members, said they considered it primary. Uh, considered their primary responsibility to avoid war between a nu- the nuclear states and to reduce strategic risks while aiming to work to create an atmosphere of security. We declare that there would be no winners in a nuclear war. It would never be started. The Russian language version of the statement read, an English language version was released by the White House. We affirm that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. The statement reads, we also affirm that nuclear weapons, for as long as they continue to exist, should ser- serve defensive purposes, deter aggression and prevent war. We believe strongly that the further spread of such weapons must be prevented. Note, this typically means that other con- uh, really harsh uh, impositions for other countries, um, I mean, this typically is that we should be the nuclear powers and all other countries should go through us if they want to, say, have a nuclear plant that we don't like. Um, but, I mean, it's at least uh, perhaps a little bit of a good um, news. The question is, is it actually historic or... Is this just like the first time in a while that the nuclear powers get together to say this? It's just the first time in a while. I mean, they, they've obvious because they've they've kind of been yeah, breaking. Their sounds agreement. pretty like nineteen uh, fifties. But I can't tell since I like I wasn't really around uh, personally when like nukes were the main cons- uh, concern like globally. The main scare. I mean, they obviously they never stopped being there, but people uh, like the general popular attention just turned away, and the popular Im- imagination as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I can't tell if this is just like something like the whole grand statement of like no, there is no winner in the nuclear war. Whether it's just it's very like, recycled it elsewhere and not from the actual like nuclear powers before or whether this is like just a rerun it's a rerun uh, rerun yeah i mean this is i mean there's basically reaffirming what has been uh, you know uh, something they've been saying since the 60s and then reaffirming all, all of the time i mean i guess it's good in a way because there are nuclear tensions and it's clear that uh, trump did not intend to f- follow this at all uh, and uh, obviously russia has been doing has been interpreting this in a very free way and so does china who is massively increasing their nuclear arsenal so there is like i mean clearly That's reasons really for this but but again it's it's not oh, really about yeah. the member states it's about other countries i mean this is typically what they mean if you really read it it's about the fact that we have nuclear weapons is uh, that's uh, good, uh, but what they what they tend to agree on is that other countries should never get nuclear weapons, and this is uh, often the, I mean, this is the reason why these are the five, one of the main reasons, uh, at least, why these are the five permanent members in the NATO, NATO in the in the UN Security China, Council. China has been like drastically increasing their arsenal. That's interesting. Do we have like any very recent numbers since, like maybe sometime last decade? I uh, yeah. seem to recall that like at least for the U.S. and Russia, like the actual 
when it came to the actual numbers, the Arsenal's had been like steadily going like. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be careful about things. this because obviously anything that China does right now is politicized. But there's been a lot of news about uh, China changing his mind about nuclear weapons and bulking up his arsenal at an accelerated pace. Uh, this, remember that this, uh, this information is from the US Defense Department's annual report on China's military. So that's mm. typically how you get these news. Whether yeah. it's typically very devoid of any sources. Uh, they're just saying this is fact. Like, uh, Iran has weapons of mass destruction. China is doing this. Us. Just the rest is bro. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess there yeah. could, there might be some. I don't know. Is there any OSINT? Like, are there any like OSINT people doing work on this? Or there are. There are. I mean, I could find. Like one would imagine. Obviously, like. Regular people crowdsourcing, it's. There are limitations to when it comes to resources, but still, like. It's a lot of just, yeah, combing over satellite data and whatever else. Oh. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm sure there is. But it's hard. I mean, so many of these are also like, you go like. Federation of American Scientists, uh, like, and a, a lot of these that are supposed to be non-profit organizations. I, I could, I could check out. Wikipedia has a list of it, which maybe they should, they could list the sources to that particular list. Okay, this. China. All right, so if we look here. Arms Control Association. Seems to be about. Yeah, I'm not going to do all of this research, but it seems that yeah, it's... Maybe we should do, do it at some point. Yeah, I mean, this is actually interesting. This is when... when yeah, like, it was... where do the numbers come from? It's, it's some of the very, like, most basic... Again, we're not exactly journalists here, but, like, it's, it's still good to remember yeah. to us. I mean, they are essentially situated in, in Washington, D.C., Right. Um, and I don't want to be that dude, but that's normally not a great place for a politically impartial uh, organization to be housed. I mean, just at a very. I mean. Daryl G. Kimball. This dude seems all right. But, I mean, like, uh, what I think is funny is that, that the, the, the New Line Institute report on, um, on China, for instance, was just, you go in and you start reading, and it's like, these are all NATO executives. These are not humanity. I mean, they all, they've, they all sit in the, they're all, uh, m I mean, military strategists. They are not human rights people, which is which is essentially what was published in the news. I mean, this <laughs> like I, it's so weird to see that that being republished. For instance, that was, uh, but anyway, 
From 1997 to 2000, he was the executive director of the Coalition to Reduce Nuclear Dangers, a consortium of 17 of the largest U.S. non-governmental organizations working together to strengthen national and international security. Okay. I mean, this is not obviously uh, fucked up like that one was. Um, Dara is a frequent source of reporters rep for reporters and has written and spoken extensively about nuclear arms control and non-proliferation -prol and weapons production. Yeah, there is a ton of organizations that are like, like, go back to the Cold War years that are still somehow going and uh, yeah, they're doing decent work. So you actually have to dig into it. Want to make any judgment? Ah, uh, yeah, interesting. I mean, but this okay. I'm gonna say this on, on a very quick glance. I'm not gonna do it today. This seems uh, more legit than the New Line Institute of. <laughs> It was just like fucking hell, bro. What? Um, didn't even have a Wikipedia page, and uh, and people are just publishing the reports. Like, yeah, this is so uh, fifty uh, human rights experts and activists who are <laughs> publishing uh, damning. Then evidence. again, Wikipedia page, like it's. I'm not sure if it's like a super but, reliable measurement of things either i mean i, I think that's like I, I think why i react on that is that because it, like if when you're republishing a report that you're just essentially translating something that is essentially saying this nation is committing genocide and the report that you're using comes from a source that don't have a v i mean that should at least like the fact that you know that would raise a flag if i'm gonna do the minimum minimal research i'll be like do they even have a you know i would want to find out a little bit more i go to wikipedia and see at least that that should be the first place you know and if they don't have one i will definitely uh, research a little bit more and then probably i would find out but, but it's just clear they don't even they don't even do anything i mean they don't even check anything like they don't they don't just republish it Translated, republished. New York Times. Yes, so let's uh, just uh, publish this. Um, and that's, uh, that I, I don't know. I, it's just, that's you, I don't know. Like, I, I just, just pisses me off. That actually really does, because people trust these newspapers. I mean, at least, at least to do some rudimentary fact-checking and just saying, well, maybe it's not really well. It seems to be come from this organization. You're linking the organization. Anyone who clicks there or do some research will know that it's not human rights activists that is behind this report. I mean, yeah, it's frustrating. Uh, on a very quick glance, this one seems okay, at least uh, on here. I guess if you start searching for these people outside, maybe you get more information. Anyhow, it doesn't really matter. It's beside the point. But yes, I mean, it's worth to say at the same time, we, to be honest, okay, um, when we're talking about list of nuclear weapons, so U.S. has, uh, and note now that the number of warheads uh, potentially isn't all that interesting, okay? I mean, it's the age, it's the, I mean, mm. this is just a very... Um, Stupid number, but we will take it anyway. I mean, USS 5600. The numbers have probably been going down from the peak. Like, oh, yeah. The Cold War, since they just phase out old ones and they don't make enough new ones to replace them. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Uh, you could probably guess that whatever they're having here, um, that's not old, at least it's not old warheads anymore. Uh, what they probably have left is, is pretty decently new ones. I know US has been replacing its arsenal recently. I mean, that's what they've said. Russia is, I mean, who knows? Probably. I doubt uh, anything else. But they have 6,257 warheads. UK has 225 warheads, 290 for France, and China has 350 uh, warheads. Right. And then you go down to the non- uh, 
countries here. India with 160, Pakistan with 165, North Korea with 45, and Israel with 90. Mm -hmm. Wonder what the yeah undeclared in the answers between like under the treaty non so how do you mean undeclared yeah how you mean how yeah, I mean under the non profit uh proliferation treaty non approved yeah treaty but the undeclared bits yeah that's interesting i mean i guess it's well understood that israel has got nukes from us maybe mm. yeah they just haven't confirmed that they are nuclear power i guess yeah so where how is it sourced then like we could check Israel, let's read. Israel is widely believed to have been the sixth country in the world to develop nuclear weapons, okay? But it's not acknowledged, it's not, it has not acknowledged its nuclear forces. It had rudimentary but deliverable nuclear weapons available as early as 1966. Israel is not a party to the NPT. Israel engages in strate strategic ambiguity, saying it would not be the first country to introduce nuclear weapon into the region, but refusing to otherwise confirm or deny a nuclear weapons program or arsenal. This policy of nuclear opacity has been interpreted as an attempt to get the benefits of deterrence with a minimal political cost. According to the Natural Resource Defense Council and the Federation of American Scientists, Israel, Israel likely, Israel, so there's the sources likely possesses around 75 to 200 nuclear weapons. The Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, okay, we could find out who those are, estimates that Israel has approximately 80 intact nuclear weapons, of which 50 are for delivery by Jericho 2 medium-range ballistic missiles, and 30 are gravity bombs for delivery by aircraft. SIPRI, Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, also reports that there was renewed speculation in 2012 that Israel also have developed nuclear-capable submarine-launched cruise missile missiles. Right, so that's actually interesting, like, that you... Yeah, they refuse to, like, I will neither confirm nor deny. Yeah. I mean... It's such an offshoot of the American uh, military industry in many ways. Um, mm -hmm. The U.S. probably helped Israel with nukes. I mean, the, the thing is, the U.S. knows if Israel has nukes or not, for sure. Uh, but yeah. but uh, let's just say the Mossad... I mean, there's a reason why police agencies all over the world uh, buy... Uh, Israel uh, spy technology and hacking technology and military strategies and all of that stuff. They have a... It's like a training ground for covert operations and military... Uh, but who knows? <sighs> anyway, that's fucking shady. We actually not have any eye bleach. I, I might have something saved up, just not on the Trello. Because we're pretty much out of news by now, we, if that wasn't obvious. So I can link some of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Almost feels like we've had this one before, but I'll, I guess I'll end at it anyway. Wrecked. Yes. Yeah, we need to end on this note.
Oh my god. That's- my cat would never do that. She's wait, waiting well behaved, sure. <laughs> Playing hurt. Ow! Oh, referee! Help me. Sweet. Good stuff. At least I think that's all news, right? Um... I'm gonna try to... I have another one. Just... Oh, yes. There we go. Oh, shit. I have too many stuff now. Ah, uh, yeah, nice, okay. This good cat. We can't have that sort of cat hatred on our channel. Too long. That's exactly how my last cat used to do. Always wanted to sleep under the blanket. Yeah, Dukti. Dukti cat. Dukti cat. Oh, look at that. Look at that cat face. Oh, oh no, they're smiling cats again. <laughs> killer cat attacks. Your murder. algorithm must learn now. Yeah, it knows I want to have the killer murder cats. Here it is, attack at a killer cat. In the window to the left, there's the mailbox. Oh no, this is like a horror movie. Oh shit. He's waiting. Uh oh. Oh no. Listen it. You're annoying the cat, of course it's gonna attack you. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Don't use come closer. <laughs> oh well. Oh shit, no, oh. I have I have auto play. It's gonna go it's gonna go on forever. Ruining my play. <laughs> Alright. Oh, there's even like a cat statue, that's even creepier. Yeah, there's a cat I statue. Stairs. Oh, okay, yeah. They probably have a lot of cats. Well, okay. Like a cat statue, yeah. Um, but good. Well, when do yeah. you, you're coming to Sweden soon? Hopefully. Yeah, I'm Let's not, probably going yeah. to be in Sweden this time next week. So true. Unless they literally close the borders in between, I don't know. Yeah, that's I mean, I'm, good. I'm fully vaccinated. There's going to be a test at the border, so I'm not sure what else. Yeah. Like, not many more pre like. And on the 21st, we have a studio party. To partake in, I guess. Yeah, true. Uh, it's going to be fun to have you here, and I'm not sure who uh, many are listening, who is in Stockholm, but on the 21st, we're having a little get together in the studio. And those who yeah, feel... so if you're interested, like, I don't know, let us know on the yeah. server. And we'll see how many people we can fit in the studio. Yes. Eventually. Yeah, I... Uh, well fit, well fit. I mean, after all, we've had a, a There's pool always in room here, so. one more. There's always room. If it's there like is... A sauna. It's like a sauna, the studio. Yeah, it is. There's always room for one much, more, yeah. just one more. If there is heart room, there is butt room, as we say in Sweden. It makes perfect sense in English, I think. Uh, good stuff. And uh, if nothing else, so the question is, how are we doing the next one, next Thursday? We could probably do it from the studio, actually. That'd be fun. Depends on you. Yeah. But no, um, I'm not going to be in Stockholm in a week. It's going All right. to be the next week. Right, that's correct. Sorry, let me be clear. It's not the next week. That's the week after next. Yes. I might already yeah. be in Umeå, so we might be able to... I don't know. Depends on Seula's schedules, but I, we could stream so that I'm from her place, maybe. <laughs> 
Kenta got upset earlier when we talked about um, polyamorism. The way it is now showing up to. Yeah, so so now hours ago. now he's being sli- like slightly threatening by saying it's frightening how a son of a priest, you know, by showing that he has done some research about me, can have such an uncrystally uh, education. He says so you should be unfaithful and <laughs> hedonistic on an American he- website. I'm so confused. I I didn't watch the early bits of the stream, so. No, nah, it was. Um, it's essentially a, a Swedish uh, right-wing politician who is, uh, and along with a lot of right-wing conservative people, being really upset that this psychologist gave a grandmother, uh, actually a mother, uh, the, uh, the this mother wrote in and said, "My, I'm, I'm, a, I'm worried. My, 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 my son came to me and said he is in a polyamorous relationship, and he's interested in having." His other partners join our uh, Christmas gathering. That was so. So, how, how should I deal with this? And it was also like, and how is this gonna affect the children? Is my son being irresponsible? Like, you know, oh, no. it was clearly no. pretty much more loaded than the first question. And this psychologist essentially said, "Well, I mean, I think if you're in, you know, if you want to prioritize your relationship with your son, which is an adult, you probably have to." Um, you know, uh, come to terms with the, with his life uh, choices. Uh, that's probably you know that's the only thing I can say. And apparently that was political. That was political, and that was wrong. And then he said, how, then he started talking about. Uh, he confused so wait, it with uh, with. Uh, uh, so wait, uh, someone literally asks for advice, gets advice, and then it's political when someone gives them the advice. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, this is political. You're not supposed to talk about these sort of stuff. Would, and, uh, it would be inappropriate if someone like swooped in. Some psychologist was commenting on someone, like some un- unrelated case, maybe, or like getting like involved in some someone's life. But like, if it's literally like asking whatever, like a- a advice column or something like that, like, what, what the hell? Yeah, what, what do you expect? Anyway, anyway, it, it's pretty fun. He, he, his whole, actually, in in fact, I could send you that. The, 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 that's good Swedish practice for you. And you, it's like a masterclass in moving the goalposts, where he starts talking about Islam. In, at least the first response. Well, there is another debate when he realizes he's wrong that it's about Islam, and they are married to a lot of people, and he's like confusing polyamory with marriage. And then he's starting to talk about completely unrelated things, such, such as incest and stuff. I mean, it's, it's this whole conservative fucking uh, yeah, cringe outrage. Not, like the I mean, nuclear if, family. Yeah, exactly. Family. That's how he That's ends it. Been known for yeah. a fairly limited amount of time. Yeah, and he, I mean, we talked about you can make conservative... It's to be like absolute degeneracy. Exactly. I mean, other people should live like I want them to live. That's essentially the whole argument. And and uh, because I can't really argue for that, because I'm also supposedly right-wing, I'm for people's freedom to make their own choices. I'm just going to move the yeah, whole goalpost. I'm going to blame other people for getting political about private lives while also making judgments about people's private lives. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, Kent, the coast, and Kenta, got, uh, we should drop this discussion because Kenta does. does uh, but anyhow, uh, Kenta says, I'm upset because I. Today I realize I'm not talking to humans. You're robots without a soul, you unchristian heathens. Oh no. You they do not want to right force right people right into right monogamy. Right. Wrong. Yeah. Um. But I'm strength. Like I'm sure you'll make it. Yes. Maybe we we agree on other areas. Uh, but um, anyhow, how <laughs> strange like Benoit that Kenta. I don't think that's what happened yet. <laughs> Kenta woke up now by the <laughs> came came back here after being upset with us. I think for a while. Anyhow. Um, Aha! Uh-huh. Okay, okay. I'm, uh, so I'm sorry about that. He bl- uh, by the end of that uh, rant, he actually got banned for t- for two hours. Oh, no. Maybe could cool off a little oh, bit. No, poor thing. Um. Anyway, then I'm just gonna say welcome back. Uh, actually, um. 
Ja. <laughs> Anyhow, that, that was a that was a lively discussion we had uh, we had before. Like you guys, you've gone and ruined this entire day and night. Yeah. Have you any shame? I I can say like this: if for everyone who wants to live in a nuclear family, you know, old traditional, you know. As long don't beat people and force people to, you know, but you want to live in a nuclear family, get married in a Swedish church, all of those things. That's your personal choice. And I'm, I'm happy you're making your own personal choices. And I respect them. You do not have to live in a polyamorous relationship unless you want. No one will force you. That I will make sure. If that's my if if we come to a situation where the polyamorous lifestyle is a norm, and polyamorous people are saying that uh, monogamous people shouldn't uh, show themselves and, and monogamy shouldn't be shown to kids okay, well, because it's dangerous, the then then I'm right gonna fight for you. you. Yeah. Yeah. This raccoon here is going to fight to the de bitter death over your right to have a monogamous not be uh, relationship and yeah. Uh, I will make family. Uh, I will make sure you can uh, that you can still walk in the street and that that kids are still being taught that monogamy exists. You know, uh, I feel that's important and that Your you, as a monogamy, people, as a normal uh, couple, parents. quote unquote, yeah, as a as a monogamous couple, uh, that you are. Uh, I will argue for you that that you should be allowed in to your family's gathering, and I will say. I will also say that uh, and remind parents who want you to be in a polyamorous relationship instead that that's your choice and you as a parent should respect the, the weird monogamist lifestyle. You know, uh, maybe it's weird to you, but it's normal to them and it's what they want to do. I will, defi I will defend it at that point. Trust yeah, me. Like consider maybe your lifestyle is weird to someone else. Uh, I, uh, you don't see them like trying to with you have the right to live the way you do. So. No, uh, that's, uh, I have a hard time finding it under attack from anyone else in some form of brain goes. But yes, I think Strange Look also is clearly uh, still triggered. I think yeah, we have to time out both of you. Sides. Yeah, there are really upset people on both sides. Good upset people. If we're a member in the Swedish church, I will leave Sweden. I can tell you like this. Um, the Swedish church is a very progressive place. I never left the Swedish church. So if, if that bothers you, then, uh, then you may want to leave tomorrow. I mean, re do you remember that the highest uh, priest in Sweden, I think she's lesbian. So if, um, uh, you know... Um, if that matters Kenta a whole lot to you, then maybe... Our... Sorry to interrupt this, but uh, is Kenta on our server? Is he on our server? Yeah. Yeah, like, maybe you guys can get in one of the containment rooms and keep going there. Yeah, you probably can move it there. Anyway, we're gonna shut down for the night. Yeah. That's uh, what Don't we're gonna do. In. Don't need to rehash. To possibly next week. No guarantees, though. Possibly next week, and the week after that, possibly in person. At least we have to have one stream uh, now that you're here, where we can, where you can be in the studio. Maybe not on Friday. We'll see. We'll. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? You never know. Not gonna promise anything. Um, that said, uh, Shebel, Yes, tomorrow is uh, gonna be the first Shebel. It's gonna be a very relaxed, a little bit unusual Shebel because actually. I believe we're going to talk more about strategy and the election and see what we want to do. Have a little bit of like an open stream meeting about things that we think would be fun to do. And more joke and relax, maybe play some games. It's not going to be a very prepared chabal apart from yeah, listening to you guys and discussing possibilities and uh, the new year. Uh, looking forward to the new year and what we can do. Um, good shit. Uh, peoples, uh, see you later. Take care. 
Do not get COVID and don't get sick, particularly if you're in Sweden. The hospitals are fucking full. Whatever you do, please don't get sick. Do not. Stay home. Take care of yourself and other people, please. Okay. Bye. P-T-V. Oberoende. Piratistisk media. Skapad och finansierad av tittarna.